All right, so a, a bit of a, a tangent now. My PhD is focused on sarcopenia, so loss of muscle mass with age. And TMG is, is being used to form sort of a novel a novel element of that and explore some of the different different contractile properties of muscle in young and old people. So just a bit of background. So the broad focus of the PhD is actually looking at the mechanisms for muscle loss as, as we age. Um, it's growing in, in prevalence because the population is living longer and it has big implications moving forward for financial, um, social services and, and, and other things like that. So it's a, a growing research area. The purpose of the PhD in, in a you know, focus sense is to look at anabolic signaling within, within skeletal muscle and key signaling proteins within that. And the basis for that is that as we get older, our ability to respond to anabolic stimuli in the diet and um, resistance training, for example, is diminished or blunted. Um, so actually, um, so we have our anabolic stimulus, we then see an increase in protein synthesis, um, and we have a period of breakdown, undulating curve like that, and then actually net balance over the day. If that net balance is negative, we then experience muscle loss. Um, and obviously we want to implement things to, to, to generate positive balance. But as we age, we get this decrease in signaling. So you've got key signaling proteins here, mammalian target of rapamycin, which is decreased in, in older people. This is from uh, about 12 years ago, this paper by Cuthbertson. Um, we can see that there's a decrease there in key signaling elements. So if the signaling response is diminished, then they have a decreased response to protein in the diet or, or exercise. So the signals are coming in, in, in the diet, but the cells just not listening. Um, and the PhD is geared towards trying to flesh out some of these mechanisms, but also explore some other aspects as well. And TMG is, I'll, I'll bring that in in a, in a second, but you can see here we've got some histology scans, um, histology images, I should say, from Jan Lexel. We've got a 32 year old versus a 70 year old. Stain for type one, which is, is light fibers here, and then type two. And you can see that type one fibers are, are far more represented in the old person. And the, these images are from cadavers, but you can see that over the life course, we see a reduction in fiber size, which is predominantly type two fibers, and also a loss of those fibers as well. So, um, you know, this is a crucial, crucial aspect that we need to investigate further. So just to provide a bit of an overview of the study, we've got a stratification study first, which is the first half of the project that's nearing completion now. I've recruited 50 younger men and women between 18 and 45. And 50 older men and women, I've got 45 of those between 60 and 80. And essentially they come in and undergo a battery of, of tests. So we have a health screening, lipid profile, functional measures like hand grip and gait speed. We do a 1RM strength test as well, um, using a leg extension. Body composition via DEXA, so we get bone density and lean mass and all those other variables. We get a huge amount of data with that. Estimated physical activity habitually using a questionnaire and then tensile homography comes in as well so we're trying to understand because there's not a huge body of, of literature looking at aging within TMG it's obviously a novel and emerging field so we're trying to understand and describe the different characteristics of muscle using this technique so it's about 95 percent complete but unfortunately I've run out of time to actually show you any of the preliminary data but I've had a look from this initial testing session we then get muscle quality and strength data contractile properties and so on and then we choose a subset of participants to do a mechanistic study which is sort of the meat of the whole affair basically so people come in in a fasted state and then go through three experimental trials to enable us to understand how the, how their muscle is responding to protein in the diet in a, in a bolus of um, essential amino acids resistance exercise or both in combination and we suspect that there's a, an additive effect using both together it, it stimulates the muscle further and then they do seated rest for two hours and you'll see that we're taking muscle biopsies as well which is essentially the major focus of the, the project. The methodology so at this current juncture I've recruited 37 younger participants 
and 50 and older. And there's a multitude of reasons for that um, that I shan't delve into. Um, but essentially, the, the technique used has been mentioned earlier today in the other presentations. So we've initiated the current at 20 milliampers and then increased in 10 uh, increments of 10 with 10 seconds of rest in between. And then we cease measurements when the readings overlap three consecutive times. And just a few considerations um, at this moment in time. So we know that um, increased displacement, I mean, my, my hypothesis going in is that contraction time and displacement will be increased um, in the elderly, which would be indicative of muscle weakness compared to the young. And it certainly seems that way anecdotally just from looking at the data. But um, P. et al. noted increased displacement in the gastroc after 35 days of bed rest. And this bears relevance for older populations as well. So as we age and we lose muscle mass, that increases the likelihood that we'll have a fall because we also have decrements in, in function. A fall then means that you're bedridden. And then when you're bedridden, your anabolic sensitivity worsens even more, which is, you know, this is a problem. Um, and this sort of paper, obviously it's in, it's in young, healthy males. Um, but they've correlated increased displacement with a decrease in muscle thickness, um, which is obviously highly relevant. Um, and they've speculated that the increased displacement may be brought about by greater tendon laxity. And um, this article as well found a strong correlation between contraction time at 50% of supramaximal stimulation um, and percentage of type 1 fiber content. And you would expect, based on the histology images I showed you earlier, that that would be um, type 1 fibers would be greater represented in the elderly. So um, another aspect just from some preliminary considerations is that to, as well as the limited amount of research on um, aging populations with TMG, um, there's also heterogeneity in the output variables or metrics. Um, so it is difficult to extrapolate to that, but this is certainly something that I'm gonna, gonna look into further and potentially calculate normalized response speed that I think was mentioned earlier on. Um, and this has been shown to decline with age at the biceps femoris and vastus lateralis. So I guess for the, the mechanistic study, we are taking muscle biopsies from the vastus lateralis and also doing TMG there and at the biceps femoris and uh, rectus femoris. Um, and this will be useful moving forward because we can then correlate um, muscle fiber types from stainings with TMG variables. So this is will add to the, the literature and evidence base in, in this area. Down the line, I'd like to do an interventional study where we potentially put in place a resistance training protocol, dietary plan, and then do TMG sort of pre-post alongside uh, the intramuscular tests and all of that. So I think there's a lot of novel applications for TMG. Um, and certainly I'm looking forward to running the statistical analysis on, on what I've got so far. So yeah, that's just a, a bit of a flavor for what I'm doing with, with TMG at the moment. Um, has anyone got any questions? Okay. <laughs> do you do? Um, Uh, what's the reason for that? Because you've used 18 to 45 and then 60 to, was it 80? Yeah, so, so we've them? kept the groups discreet in that way. We've not left it open because we, we're, the purpose of the first study is to target young and older groups. And the data that's out there would suggest that people between 60 and 80 have demonstrated anabolic um, decrements in anabolic sensitivity. Uh -huh. And we know that in younger people, we should expect to see a robust response, but Going beyond 45, that's when you start to see sarcopenia manifest. Oh, yeah. yeah, so that's that's why we've we've controlled that aspect of it. Just so on the list there, Ben, did you see your measuring muscle mass? Yes, yeah, yeah DEXA, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you.